From The Australian, here's what's on the front. I'm Claire Harvey. It's Wednesday, November 6. Results will start flowing in tonight from the US election and subscribers to The Australian will be the first to know whether the next president of the US will be Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Join us now at theaustralian.com.au to make sure you don't miss a thing. The former police officer accused of murdering two men in Sydney has not entered a plea to the charges against him. Bo Lamar Condon's lawyer has withdrawn from the case and he'll now be represented by legal aid. The matter returns to court at the end of the month. Quincy Jones, the most influential musical figure of our age, has died at 91. Amid a world's worth of tributes, our own Jasper Leake, who composed The Front's theme and edited this episode, reflects on his own moment, learning at the feet of the master. I would like to have you meet one of the finest musicians that I've ever known, Mr Quincy Jones. That was Frank Sinatra in the 60s, introducing someone whose imprint on American music, and therefore the music of the entire world, is indelible. Quincy Jones has died at the age of 91, leaving a musical legacy that spans the story of this century and the last. From the legends of jazz to the titans of popular music, the blossoming of hip-hop, Quincy had about 10 careers in his lifetime. This is Jasper Leake. He's part of our team here at the front, but Jasper's also an incredibly accomplished musician and producer in his own right. In the noughties, Jasper moved from Sydney to New York as a jazz-obsessed 20-something with dreams of being where the magic happened. He toured with some of the world's biggest acts. He also waited plenty of tables. And then he found himself in the orbit of Quincy Jones. Jasper was music consultant and supervisor on Netflix's 2018 documentary Quincy, for which Jasper received an Emmy nomination. It started with a phone call from my friend, Alan Hicks, another Australian who'd already spent a year working as a co-director on the documentary with Quincy's daughter, Rashida Jones. Al called me with an idea to score the documentary, but only using music from Quincy's pre-existing catalogue. I love the idea, and I'd been secretly hoping for this to happen, but it was one of those situations where my immediate response was sheer terror. How was I going to capture the career of music's most legendary figure over a two-hour documentary? Jasper said about listening to everything Jones had ever recorded. I was handed a hard drive with Quincy's full discography on it, and I knew the only way I'd get comfortable with this huge task was to listen to everything front to back. It was the best job I've ever had. I'd wake up in the morning, and for eight hours a day, I'd listen to Quincy's discography in chronological order, which was an incredible education in itself. And as I listened, I made the whole thing searchable. I set up a spreadsheet and identified little snippets from all these tracks that I imagined would come in handy during the editing process, and i tagged them all according to era, mood, style, and genre. It was more than 3,000 songs across about 300 albums. So eventually, if Al or Rashida needed music for a scene and asked me for something that was introspective and bluesy from the 50s recorded by a small ensemble, I could find it straight away. With the exception of Quincy himself, I'm probably the only person who's listened to his full discography, so I was learning at the feet of the master. I knew who he was, of course, but I became overwhelmed at the volume of work that he'd produced in his lifetime. Not just the volume, but how ambitious a lot of it was too, and the genres he spanned. There were film scores with full orchestration, records that were quite experimental. He did one gospel album with Little Richard. Michael Jackson's Thriller is a great example of Quincy's ambition. It was, it was a lot more than, hey, let's write a great song and record it in a studio with a great band. Like, artistically, it was really ambitious. There was the music video that was the longest music video ever at the time. 
Quincy had the vision to bring that team together. Rod Tempered and the songwriter with the director John Landis, who directed the Blues Brothers, and choreographer Michael Peters. Quincy achieved so much in his lifetime that you can draw inspiration from him, but it'd be impossible to try and model your career after his. He was beyond prolific. I was trying to carve out this career for myself as a musician, as a songwriter and a producer. But when you see what he did with those elements, it was beyond humbling. While this was going on, Jasper's father, Bill Leake, died. Bill was the Australian's legendary cartoonist and a celebrated artist in his own right. I spent a lot of time thinking about my dad during work on the documentary. And something I loved about the project was that it was Rashida's tender tribute to her father. To have somebody who's created music that expressed a certain emotion and then to be able to pair that with an emotional moment in his life is a real huge blessing. Here's Rashida Jones talking to The Hollywood Reporter about the documentary. That being said, it spans so many decades and there's so many different types of genres and so the music selection became essential to the storytelling. Coming up, how Jones helped Jasper find his own roots. Join BET for one of the most memorable nights of the year as we honour the icon, hitmaker and musical legend, Quincy Jones. Let the good time... This was no ordinary 85th birthday party. It was a musical tribute to Jones at a theatre in downtown LA with American musical royalty playing in his honour. John Legend, LL Cool J, Gladys Knight, Gloria Estefan. There was an after party at a Hollywood bar and there was this extended jam session with people like Usher was singing in the band and Herbie Hancock was playing keyboards. Dave Chappelle got up and spoke. I mean, it was the who's who of American culture in this little bar. But Quincy was the last man standing. He always was. By that stage of his life, he'd given up drinking, but he was nocturnal. He'd spend the night doing puzzles. He never switched off. Born in 1933 in Chicago, Quincy Jones was directly descended from enslaved people. One of the first times I met him, he asked me about my own racial background. He said, I look like a Richie one of Lionel Richie's kids. He said, you got some gumbo going on, by which he meant I look like a mixture of a few different heritages. Quincy was really into genealogy, including his own family story. I told him I didn't know a huge amount about my mum's heritage. She's German, but she grew up in children's homes and never found out who her biological father was. Quincy leaned over and said, look into your roots, man. I got my mum a DNA kit for her next birthday. And it came back with the results that her genes were 75% Western European, 25% West African, which suggests her father was half West African. Our family's theory is that maybe her father was an ex-American military person in Germany after the war. Jones's mum was a talented singer who taught him her love of music. And in his teens, he was in a band with a young friend, Ray Charles. By his early 20s, Jones was a gifted young trumpet player and an arranger with the Lionel Hampton Big Band, playing alongside artists like Tommy Dorsey, Elvis Presley and Dinah Washington. That could have been it for him. He was at the top of his craft. But before long, Quincy became one of the world's most in-demand arrangers. He got a call out of the blue one day from Frank Sinatra, which led to work with Sinatra and the Count Basie Orchestra. From that moment on, Quincy Jones was at the centre of whatever was happening in music. He won 28 Grammys, from the E.T. soundtrack with Michael Jackson to Harry Styles' Album of the Year in 2023 for a baseline sample on the track Daydreaming. One of Jones' last Grammys was in 2019. You guys ready? For that documentary, Jasper worked on with his friend, Alan. The Grammy goes to... Quincy, Quincy Jones. Alan collected the award with Quincy's daughter, Rashida. 
When my dad first watched the film, he said, I wish I could live forever. And if anyone is going to be able to be the first to do that, I believe it's going to be him. So, Dad, I hope you live forever. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on The Front. Election results from the US will start flowing from 11am Australian Eastern Daylight Time on Wednesday. Join us live at theaustralian.com.au.